Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you how you can build a meeting tracker using Notion. So let's get started. First, let's open an empty Notion page and we're going to title this Meeting Tracker. And let's go ahead and add a cover photo, click Change Cover, and we're going to go to Unsplash for a huge stock image library. And let's find something that's blue. We're going to click this one and reposition. Save position and let's add an icon and let's go with one of Notion's icon sets and we're going to choose something that looks like a meeting theme. So this one and now we're going to go to the top right hand corner three dots and we're going to click small text full width and this is going to allow you to have more space on the page and we're going to click empty page. So now we're going to start building this meeting tracker and we're going to use a table view database for the main meeting tracker database. So type slash table, and we're going to go with table view and click plus new database. And we're going to name this database meeting tracker. And each of these rows is going to contain a meeting. And right now we have two properties in this database, name and tags, which were the defaults. And these seem to work very well. So for tags, you can put things like client, or if it's a team meeting, or onboarding, and so on. So this is just dependent on your use for meetings. And next, we're going to add more properties by clicking the plus button here. And we're going to add a date property. So you have your meeting date and we can drag this a bit further here so you can see the date closer to the name. And after that, we can put the person who is going to be at the meeting. And for that, you have two options. So if you just type person here, you're going to see this person property and this is linked to who has access to your workspace. So if you're doing something collaboratively with other people using Notion, then this person works really well. But if you're using it only for personal use, we recommend multi-select where you can just manually type the people's names. So you can click multi-select and we can name this person. So this just depends on your use case. And for example, you could put John Smith like that. And after person, you're going to want to add something that's going to show the status of the meeting. And although Notion has this status property, it only allows you to choose one status at a time. So instead, we recommend using another multi-select for the status. And we're going to call this status. And we're going to add a couple options. So the default status could be not started. And then we could put review needed. You could put follow-up needed. And done. And let's actually change the color for this by going to the three dots here, just so it doesn't get confusing to green. So whenever you add a new meeting, you can just have it to set to just not started first. And then after that, we can put another property which is going to be an optional property called follow-up date so you can keep track of your follow-up dates so we could do follow up date here and after that you might want to have a place where you can keep track of the location of the meeting and for that we recommend url property so you could put the link to the online meeting or a link to the google maps so we're going to type location for this and another thing you might want is files and media in case you need to attach some files here. So let's actually just add that there just in case. And now let's check what we have. So we have files and media location, follow-up date, status, person, tags, date, and name. And you might end up coming up with more things you want to add to your meeting tracker. But for now, let's just keep it like this and work on some other aspects of this. So before we move on, let's just fill this in a bit so that we have more to work with. So we're just going to fill it in with some placeholders. 
So once you've filled in the meeting tracker with some placeholders or real meetings, we can move on to the next step. And that's going to be to create a calendar view so that you can actually see these meetings on a calendar. And for that, we're going to click on this table and we are going to click duplicate. And after that, you can click on the layout and change it to calendar. And now you'll see this in calendar view. Let's actually change the name here to calendar. And let's see here, you see client meeting and you'll see team meeting, partnership meeting. And now you'll notice that there's no other information here. So for that, you want to click the three dots here and click properties and choose which properties you want to show. So we want to show the person, status, tags, and that's it. So you can see who's coming to the team meeting. You can see if it started yet and what kind of meeting it is, team. So this is how you can set up your calendar here. And then we're going to go back to the table and start adjusting this here. So for meetings, you want to see the meeting which is going to be coming up next. And for that, we're going to go to the filter button and we're going to filter by date. And we want to see all the meetings where the start date is on or after today. So you're going to only see future meetings if you do this and we're going to save for everyone. So if you want to keep track of all your meetings, your first page you want to see all the upcoming meetings. So it's better if you filter this way. And then you can also add a sort, the date, and we're going to sort it by ascending, save for everyone. And now you can see the most upcoming meeting on the top and everything is going to be in the future or today. So this is super useful, but let's also say that you want to see everything on your list. So then you want to duplicate this and let's just name this view all and we can remove this filter, delete filter, uh, save for everyone. Actually, we'll change this to descending so that you can see now the latest meeting dates, save for everyone. And after that, you could even do things like add tabs here for, for example, meetings which you need to review and meetings which you need to follow up. So for that, you could just do duplicate and you can choose review needed and then you could click the filter button view needed and save for everyone and you can add another one duplicate and this one we could do follow up needed and this one you can filter by follow up needed save for everyone and now you can actually drag these tabs so you can put them where you want. And for example, something like this. And this one we could rename upcoming. And now you can see if we change these statuses. So let's say this one you're done, but you need to follow up. You could click this one. And this one you need review and you need to follow up. So then you can click here review needed and you see that this one is review needed and if you click here you'll see that these are also follow-up needed ones and you can see it in a calendar and you can see view all so these are some really useful ways to keep track of your meetings and the final thing we actually wanted to show you is the functionality of having your meeting tracker combined with notion ai so Let's say that we add now a property here, the plus sign, which is AI summary. So if we add AI summary here, then what happens is if we type your meeting notes inside here, meeting notes, and let's say we're meeting with a client about a template. So we could just put some notes, client needs template. For small business 
needs invoicing function, a way to keep track of finances and tasks. And let's say that we close this and we go to AI summary. If we click the update button here, you'll get a AI summary that's over here. And this is going to be super useful if you need to just have a quick glance of what these meetings are about instead of having to click into each meeting. So if you're interested in upgrading to Notion AI, we'll leave a link for it in the description. And if you do decide to purchase it, we may receive a small commission from it at no cost to you, and it'd be a huge support to us. And the final thing we wanna show you is also that you can add meeting templates. So if you click the arrow here and you click plus new template, let's say that you always have the same template for client meetings. You could put client meeting and client meeting notes, and then you could put tasks after meeting and so on. So you could actually make a sort of framework in advance and if you click back what happens is now if you click plus new and let's say we open it you have the the possibility to click client meeting inside which is gonna give you the template that you just created for client meeting notes so this is also a very useful way to use notion if you're keeping track of meetings that's the basics of creating a meeting tracker with notion and if you like the completed version of this template we'll leave a link to that in the description below and if you had any questions, comments, or anything that was confusing, please let us know. And we hope to see you in the next video.